if you're a SOLIDWORKS user, you're going to want to watch this video. Also, if you're a designer, drafter, engineer, entrepreneur, maker, or even a student, then this video is for you. SOLIDWORKS has just unveiled the release of their flagship product, SOLIDWORKS 2022, and we're here to break it all down for you, talk about the highlights, the things that mean the most to us. John, welcome. Hi. Hey there. So John Landis is here with me. I'm Todd Trout. And let's break it all down. Let's get right into it, right? I saw some pretty cool things in the launch yesterday. What would you think, Todd? So, I mean, the data set's amazing. I mean, this Nemo uh, personal submersible vehicle, so that's all wrapped around that. That's really great. I've wanted a personal submarine since I have ever since I can remember. We'll have to see about getting a discount. There you go. That's, that sounds good to me. All right, so jumping right in though they, they they really did a good job i think starting out they, they took a lot of time but painted a good picture of the vision of design the future we heard from john paulo bossi we heard from r d so there was a lot of good stuff in that the uh one of those takeaways for me was the 3d experience platform and how solidworks is an entry point to this entire portfolio of these advanced tools that really embrace the the enterprise operation good point we're going to go in deep detail on October 4th and 5th. Um, you know, they, they touched on it and did a really good job. I like the clarity that they're getting on the, the, the vision and, and how all this ties together. And then they went into R&D. So we heard, we heard about, we heard from them at, at R&D and talked about all the improvements and attention they're paying to performance and quality, right? So that's always been big. Not surprisingly, a significant portion of their resources, time, money, and energy was spent on just that, you know, um, performance, uh, quality, uh, uh, just making the software run better on your existing hardware. They saw performance increases. They probably quoted on the low end at 11%, which I think is great. And they're basing that off a 7,000 part assembly. One of those tools that, you know, we don't have access to through just straight up desktop SolidWorks is the, um, uh, the sculpting tool that uh, oh. Jordan showed us, um, a 3D sculptor. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a right brain kind of thing. Uh, maybe not my my wheelhouse, but but what do you think of it? Uh, the the ability to push and pull and you know generate shapes you know in a really rapid way. Yeah, no, I, I love the idea of getting a that digital hunk of clay, getting it out there, push and pull like you said, and those concepts. But what really spoke to me is is there's more and more like precision, right? It's not just the the the, the, the right brain lump of clay yeah, yeah you, you've got some precision in there and then i think really um you know down the line they showed where you can integrate that into your solidworks workflow and and use tools that you're used to using shelling cutting and extreme you know chop away with some of those traditional uh tools on your uh freeform uh concept design so that was really cool i i, I definitely say check that out that's that's a highlight to to get into for sure. Um, you know, then when they got into the, you know, the nuts and bolts, talk to me about what you think, because I know you're kind of a, you're a big fan of, of tweaking the user interface, yeah, right? Yeah. So well, they, they got into that. I'm a ground level guy. I, you know, I click the mouse a lot and, you know, for years I've thought they have as many psychologists on staff at SolidWorks as they do engineers and programmers because the user interface is just so intuitive and they've you know done it again they they've given us some more tools and tweaked the interface a couple highlights for me is that our shortcut key the s key now um on that toolbar it now has the command search right there under your fingertips it's a, such a delighter um so you can just hit the s key search for any command and then instantly add it to that shortcut toolbar if you want to another one that jumped out at me was the q key it's a totally new way of uh of observing or, or visualizing reference planes uh coordinate systems and and uh, uh origins in your components yeah. just with hitting the q key and you don't have to go to your feature tree to pick a, a plane for a mate operation stuff that just makes it so easy and real quick finally they've really revamped a lot of the messages and warnings and they all have a consistent look and feel um, and the, the system options dialog box has been rejuggled a little bit to make it a little more um, consistent. Look, I know some folks may look at those kind of improvements, enhancements, and say, this is just, you know, paint and, 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 and making it look better or, or that sort of thing. They're small enhancements. But 
when I hear customers talk and see this stuff, they're like, oh, yeah, that, that's so much better. I really like that. So I think it really ends up being a good impact on, on the user experience. So, so that's really cool. Um, uh, we, we touched on it a little bit, but the performance, you know, sort of out of the box, um, you know, graphics that they've been working on, that's a big, uh, big thing for me as well. So actually, let's, let's jump on in, though. They talked about if you're making just general parts design right? Right, um, right what were some of those big things for you there so yeah there's uh there's still room for for new stuff in part modeling in solidworks believe it or not at this at this stage of the game uh one one thing that i thought was pretty cool was their their continued development of the hybrid modeling environment i'm talking oh, yeah. about mixing uh, mesh B-Rep bodies with your typical solid B-Rep or your surfaces. Uh, they showed us some really cool ways. We don't have to go through all these mental gyrations to say, hey, this is a, a mesh body. Now I have to do something different. You work with it the same way you do with typical solid bodies. I thought that was just so cool. The other one that stood out to me, mirroring across two planes. And that's really basically one of those <laughs> things that, well, you're thinking like- I'm laughing oh. because it feels like it should have been there all along, right? Exactly, they were saying right? that after 2022, yay. A lot of stuff we hear about is people working with assemblies and they want them to be faster, especially as their yeah. assemblies grow, right? So large design review, again, had some enhancements that I think will, that people will really like. So a lot of my clients, I see them making more and more complex assemblies and achieving more uh, you know, more robust types of designs, and these assemblies tend, tend to grow. And working with large assemblies can be a bit challenging, but in large design review mode, we can open top-level assemblies instantly, you know, open them up very, very fast. And we've had that capability for a while. The last few releases, right. they've added uh, some editing capabilities with being able to insert components and make components, all in this ultra-fast large design review mode. But the enhancement this year is the ability to open up sub-assemblies in large design review mode as well. So you don't have to go gyrating through your file open dialog. In fact, you can open up any sub-assemblies from large design review mode directly into large design review mode or mm -hmm. resolved or lightweight. And then yeah. bonus from a you know, productivity and being able to work lightning fast in your giant assemblies, you can even launch a drawing that's in uh, detailing mode directly from your large design review. Okay, good, good, good segue there to one of the other big things that spoke to me throughout the whole uh, broadcast was the drawings improvements and detailing mode. So that's that's been big, but it's uh, even more functionality. I'd say go check that out for sure because again, you can do more, but you can also open any prior version of a drawing, mm -hmm. prior released version, right? Um, in detailing mode, uh, you don't even have to have a model available. We can do more in this uh, detailing mode as well. Every release we've been able to do more and more, obviously add reference dimensions, but now we can even in insert standard views without the model being open. What kind of programming magic did that, did that take? <laughs> right, yeah, it, it almost is like magic. The kind of shifting from sort of the, um, the traditional desktop things that we're used to they, they showed us some really great cloud data management, right? So we all know that you got to manage your data. You're doing it whether you have a formal tool or not, right? You got to manage your data that you're creating. And they showed us some, you know, within the task pane, cloud data management. It, it was right there in the right pane of SolidWorks. You know, this is great for folks who don't want to stand up a PDM server, who are looking for a turnkey solution with, uh, you know, simple storage, uh, robust storage, but you know, right. simple workflows and a simple, easy to understand interface. So this is totally cloud-based. You see common symbols in the right pane of SolidWorks that tell you whether your files are up to date, whether they are reserved, whether somebody else is working on them, uh, and whether you're allowed to edit them. Very you know, common types of document management stuff. But it's a turnkey solution that doesn't require any hardware, this tight integration yeah. between desktop SolidWorks and the, the greater um, portfolio that, that it now belongs to. Now, you mentioned the integration, and, and what, I, what really stood out to me was when they took the, the, the model, the concept model that they created in X-Shape, mm -hmm. right, and then brought it into SolidWorks through the, the, the cloud data management. It's right there. 
Who's um, right there. That's where, all, yeah, it's where your files are. And then they, that's where they brought it in and used those downstream design features in SolidWorks. So that's how you see all this stuff working together. That, that really stood mm -hmm. out. That was really cool. Then they then they shifted really to the um, you know spent a bit of time on sort of graphics in general. That's a lot mm -hmm. of you know sort of more of the eye candy I guess that people um, like to see. But the uh, you know improvements in 3D textures and cosmetic threads. But then they spent some time on visualize. Some nifty little stuff when you you put your uh, your imagery with uh, HDRI background. It used to be a challenge to match the perspective and right. focal length of the cameras on the two different objects. And now we have some really great ways of doing that as well. Um, again, check out our session. Uh, I can't re remember which day it is, the October 4th or 5th, but we have a session uh, on, on visualizing all the cool stuff in there as well. I tell you what, if anybody, if they just watch both days in their entirety, they'll catch it on visualize, okay. right? Just be right, safe. Right. Don't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and 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 actually, too, the thing that it really is, it starts, it just blows my mind when you see the what they do with shadows and they and that new um, that that new shadow catcher feature. So check that out for sure. Um, now look, um, kind of kind of the last part that they spent time on was with simulation and and uh, both the again traditional desktop simulation tools, but then the cloud and uh, uh, 3D experience products. But real quick on simulation, they just just everything's faster, right? Your solutions are faster. They they showed 27% improvement there. That was really cool. I really did like the the new uh, linkage rod connector. So that yeah. was great. Um, you know, when you can instead of modeling a piece, you you use a connector that makes all the the the, the finer design points work faster. So that's really cool. Um, the, oh, the, on the plastics was really nice. The way you can do um, uh, symmetry both um just, left hand right like, hand and rotational symmetry yeah and, uh, with fa family molds quick and right. easy not having to go through yeah. any gyrations at all didn't have to create models to to sort of make that assembly look that way right. and then do the analysis so you could yeah. use the symmetry option so that was really good yep so so on the analysis side i mean you know desktop solidworks has some 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 great uh simulation tools but the, you know we all know there's tools that are above and beyond the SolidWorks side of things, and now we have access to all of those. Simulia, um, FE Safe, um, electromagnetic tools and RF tools, multi physics, um, you know, flow tools that are just incredible in terms of determining buffeting and very difficult and complex to to uh, uh, calculate um, phenomenon. And to your point, you can do it on your desktop, or you can actually solve this stuff on the cloud. There's options yeah. in there to get you know virtual machines with up to 144 processors imagine what you'll do with all that extra time yeah and i see people really needing to leverage this when they you know they, they wanted they've they've wanted to do that kind of analysis in the past they know they got this high-end uh need uh the tools there now and instead of maybe outsourcing that right. and um you know so they can do the analysis and then like you said the the computing power you can leverage that off the cloud uh, system so that's that's amazing and just opens that up for a lot more people my my takeaway was the future is very bright there's some a lot of good stuff that's that's uh, being released with this version desktop is uh, continuing to get uh, lots of attention to uh, improvements enhancements uh, capabilities quality and and performance so it's going to be well, it's, uh it's what was your be, favorite feature on the desktop todd i i, I they're all I around go, yeah i mean I, I always go back to well okay all around i, I really really like the x shape tool and then on the desktop it'd probably be detailing oh. mode because again day in day out with drawings and people that are making uh, you know opening up large drawings and you can just do so much now you can really really improve your speed it's all about the speed. Um, <clears throat> I really like the uh, uh, the configuration manager. Uh, yeah. This is kind of an update to the what we all know is modified configuration table, and they've you know I've always felt that tool was was almost uh, unfinished, and now they finished it, and you can do so much with the configuration manager above and beyond what you can do traditionally. Check it out. All right. So after you seeing this and and looking at it some uh, some on your own. Is 2022 one uh, a release and upgrade that you'd recommend for folks? Oh, absolutely! You know, the 10% increase in performance would just get me in the get me on in line right now. 
Yeah, and, I, and for me, the, the improvements in quality and, and in S, reduction in SPRs, folks are going to have more of a confidence in upgrading sooner. Go ahead and go into SP0 right off the bat. You're going to be in good shape. One thing I didn't mention before, right, is that they announced the official um, release date of SP0. November 23rd. Yep. yep. So uh, mark your calendars for that, too, because that's when you can really get your hands on SP0. Thanks for the for the insight, John. It's always a pleasure, man. Um, look forward to, to talking later about uh, some of these new features. Yep, yep. Well, I'll, I'll be in the room uh, for our tech talks, so uh, I'll have more to say about it, and I hope to see you there, Todd. All right, let's see you around. All right.